for the top news across the campus of Marshall University. In the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications, JMC-TV presents MU Report. Hello and thanks for joining us for the second edition of MU Report Fall 2023. I'm Austin Johnson. And I'm Bria Smith. MU Report is a student produced newscast of the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications at Marshall University. And we create content within an organization called JMC TV. You can catch this broadcast anytime on Facebook and on YouTube. First up, headlines. A campus safety walk is coming up soon, and it's a topic on everyone's mind these days. The walk with Marshall and community leaders is set for 6 p.m. Monday, October 16th. The walk is so students and leaders can look for any trouble spots so that Marshall can address them. Also, be aware that Marshall still needs student tutors. You can get paid $15 an hour, and if you're interested, search the Marshall website and click on Become a Tutor. Commuting to campus can be a hassle sometimes, and the ongoing construction on Howe Greer Boulevard has proven to only make matters worse. As Jonathan Edwards reports, students have had to find ways to avoid the traffic congestion and make it to class on time. Students driving to campus have experienced delays when driving down Howe Greer Boulevard for months, and it seems as though that will not be changing for the foreseeable future. Some students say that it hinders their daily commute and even makes them take a completely different route. With the construction around here, it's been a little difficult uh, getting to class on time sometimes with the detours that we have to take. Uh, makes it a little rough with how Greer being straight through the middle of campus. While the work seems nonstop, some students have begun to question the work ethic of some of the construction workers, with frustration growing as the months go by on this lengthy project. Uh, I've went by before and the construction workers have just been sitting on their phones, or I'll go by there some days and there's no one out there working, or they'll just be out there talking, hanging out, eating, just not getting the job done, I'm guessing they can fit by the hour. Although we're eight months into this project on Howgreer Boulevard, it's not expected to wrap up until late 2024. This could prove irritating to some students in the surrounding Marshall community. Emmy Report, Jonathan Edwards. As the semester gets back in full swing, commuter students are encountering familiar issues, a problem which is made worse by the lack of parking. As Joseph De Cristofero reports, commuter students are struggling to find parking near their classes. With students coming back to campus, that ignites a problem that commuter students face every semester, parking. Finding parking can be a struggle for those who drop to campus due to a lack of convenient places to park. I'm a science major and finding parking at the stadium lot in the mornings is sometimes a challenge. Because of that, that far walk all the way down to the science building it makes me late to some of my classes. Students must purchase a permit, which can range anywhere from $85 to $270. That fee may be more than some students can be able to afford. There's a major problem with parking. I mean, I feel like they got to either limit parking passes or they got to build more places to park, especially with the new business school opening up a little bit farther down campus. There's not even enough spots for professors to park down there, let alone students. The Office of Parking and Transportation says that despite having a parking permit, it does not guarantee a place to park. If students cannot find places to park, they're expected to look elsewhere around campus, which may be even further from where they have class. Joseph DeCristofero, MU Report. Though many students do not know it yet, the university is now in its final year of 14 week long semesters. A year from now, in fall 2024, starts a calendar change that adds one week back to both academic terms, fall and the spring. There are mixed emotions on Marshall University's campus concerning the approved calendar change coming next fall in 2024. Some say the switch from 14 weeks to 15 weeks is just not necessary. I just feel like it isn't fair. I've been here for a year and it just feels like a slap in the face to be going an extra week. I feel like everything gets done in the 14 weeks that we have and nothing needs to be added personally. Last year in 2022, student government representatives voted in favor of extending future semesters at Marshall University. But some students say they were not given a chance to voice their opinion on the planned switch. I really don't believe that it's necessary. I feel like 14 is enough time to get all the content we need for our classes. I've been here since last fall and from the 
two semesters that I've been in, it's been plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Despite the calendar change being a year in the making, most students on the Huntington campus say that they were not aware of the switch from 14 weeks to 15 weeks in the 2024 fall semester. Austin Johnson, MU Report. Artificial intelligence, or AI, has become a useful tool in the day-to-day -to -day life, but has it made life too easy for people? With its quick ability to generate answers in a matter of seconds, it's easy to understand why AI programs have become very popular on college campuses. With the start of the fall 2023 semester, students are noticing a new policy on the syllabi in every department across campus involving the use of AI in the classroom. A lot of them are leaning towards like not like don't don't use this like um like do like do it yourself, not don't rely on AI, stuff like that. Professors have the choice between three policies. The policies range from open use, moderate use, and prohibited use. It's a pretty interesting thing when you think about it. Like, it it's so complicated that we didn't even make it. It makes itself. We just make something that trains it, and then at the end, it's just as complicated as our brains. So we don't even know what it, really how it works. So it's a pretty interesting thing. With the university providing three different policies for professors to include in their syllabi, students are left wondering, are we limiting the possibilities of AI or preventing cheaters? Bria Smith, MU Report. While the policy may seem restrictive, the university says all it asks is that students properly cite when they are using AI. And remember that AI-generated content is not always 100% factual. That is all the time we have for this edition of MU Report. Our director is Emma Gallus and our executive producer is Dr. Christopher Swindell, our instructor. Our newscast content is generated by us, students in the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications. MU Report is a television lab and we are glad you are watching. You can always catch this newscast on JMC TV's YouTube. I'm Austin Johnson. And I'm Bria Smith. Have a great day.